It has been a season-long progression for Washington quarterback Kirk Cousins. Outstanding numbers since week 10. For more on Cousins, downstairs to Laura Oakman. Laura. And Kirk Cousins called the last five months uncharted territory, navigating his first season as a starter and also his father's continuing battle with cancer. How's he getting through it? By taking it on as a challenge, saying, if I want to be a successful quarterback, I have to learn how to block everything out. To be Tom Brady or Peyton Manning, you have to play through it all. I asked him, how are you doing with that? His answer, there's three games left. The narrative is still being written. Kenny. Thanks, Laura. Kirk Cousins and the Redskins at 6-7. and seven. Same record as the Eagles and the Giants. Redskins control their own destiny. The Bills have won the toss, selected to defer. Rashad Ross back deep as Jordan Gay gets things started here in Landover. Take it at the three by Ross. Fumbles, and he is down as he crosses the 15-yard line. So Kirk Cousins will lead the Redskins offense out onto the field. He's thrown a touchdown pass in every game this season. How about his numbers at home? 12 touchdowns, only two interceptions. It's been a big disparity of the performance of the team, not just Kirk Cousins, but the team at home versus on the road. But they had a huge step taken last week, that victory against the Bears. And a lot of things that have transpired during the course of the season, they, they stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with those and overcame a lot of adversity last week. Five and two at home, one and five on the road. First and 10, 16 yard line as Cousins hands it off to Alfred Morris and he gains two up to the 18 as we check out the Redskins starting offense. Well, the guys up front now have been playing together eight consecutive weeks. Let's see if this unit can gel. You got Trent Williams out there, your left tackle. One of the best in the NFL. And again, at the top, we talked about Jordan Reed. How does Buffalo match up with Jordan Reed in the passing game? I don't think you can cover him with their linebackers or safeties. On second and eight, catch is made by Reed, who had a tremendous game last week. He stepped out of bounds a yard shy of a first down. And when we spoke with Rex Ryan, he defined Jordan Reed as a wide receiver. We can't cover him assuming that he's a true tight end. We're going we're gonna to approach this like he's a wide receiver. I expect to see corners on him during the course of the game today make it difficult for him to run his routes. Reed joined by the newest Redskin, Alex Smith, who's out on the field on third down and one. Tight end side this week as the Redskins lost yet another tight end in Derek Carrier. And Morris is close. It will depend on the spot. It is a first down, says referee Cleet Blakeman. This Bills defense not getting the production that was expected at the start of the season, especially with the players up front. Their sack totals down from a year ago, but the big question mark today, there's a lot of skilled players out here for the Washington Redskins. Ronald Darby, a pleasant surprise, not playing like a rookie this season. Bills without their other corner, Stephon Gilmore. Timeout taken by Buffalo. Buffalo takes its first time out. This is a 30 second timeout. Rex Ryan in his first season as Bill's head coach after six years with the New York Jets. They really came after Rex Ryan this week, the local media in Buffalo. It was a difficult week and a lot of that emphasis pointed at the defense. And when Rex Ryan came in, you looked at what he's done in the past when he was with the New York Jets. You saw the talent in that Buffalo Bills defense from last season. You expected great things, and they have struggled a little bit. And it came to a head this week. Bills have lost three of their last four games after starting the season five and four. They use an early timeout. Hey, damn, damn! He set it down for the Redskins from their 26. Hey, gang, gang! The fullback, Darrell Young, in the game. This is Morris right behind Young. He was tackled behind the line of scrimmage by Marcel Darius. This is a this is a talented Bills front. The, the production's not there, but you cannot come in and think by looking at statistics that this is not a good defensive line. And if you take that approach, these are the types of things that will happen to you today. You better have two helmets 
on Marcel Darius. He works down the sideline, side to side in that run game. Defensive coordinator Dennis Thurman. Bills defense ranked 20th. Second down and 11th. Cousins with time. And the catch is made by Deshaun Jackson in Bills territory. A Redskins first down a gain of 28. Well, this is where the progression of Kirk Cousins is most evident, in my opinion. The confidence in stretching the field. Watch the little double move on the outside with Deshaun Jackson against Ronald Darby. Little stutter go releases by. That's a heck of a throw by Kirk Cousins. You've got safety help moving over that squeezes it. This ball has to be put in a certain spot. And Kirk Cousins drops it right in. From the Bills, 47, play action. It's the fullback, Young, who makes the catch. Takes it to the Bills, 41 for a gain of six before he was tackled by the Bills' leading tackler this season, Corey Graham. Well, that's kind of back-to-back -back plays about the evolution of Kirk Cousins. That time he checks it down to Darrell Young in the flat. He had Pierre Garçon deep down the field. He pressed his route, snapped it back, but a little bit of that evolution getting away from the conservative safe throw, stretching the field. He's still trying to find that balance. Cousins has started the game three for three. Off the play fake, he's now four for four. It's Ryan Grant who picks up another Washington first down. Tackle made by Darby, gain of 13. Well, we saw this last week in Chicago, a very impressive opening drive for the Redskins against the Bears. They're doing it again this week. Sean McVay getting Kirk Cousins into a great rhythm on this opening drive. We've kind of joked about it. We worked a number of Washington games. Jay Gruden has brought it up. Redskins hardly ever win the toss. This is the tenth time they have lost the coin toss. Their opponent usually defers, but last week an eight and a half minute drive by the Redskins to start the game. And they are on the move again as Cousins hands it off. Morris brings a tackle inside the 20 to the 19 yard line for a gain of nine. That's going to get something. Uh, Bill Callahan will be very excited right there because there's been times where the, the running lanes haven't been there, and as a running back, you have to make some yards that don't exist. Watch Alfred Morris on this. Should be stopped right here, right? Watch him continue to work, stutter. That's a heck of a run right there. That's getting big positive yards when there was really nothing there to gain. Second down and one as Reed shifts to the left side. Off the fake, Kamaris. Catch is made by Jordan Reed. He's inside the five and finally down at the three. 16 yards on the catch and run. This is just scouting. You have to know that this is coming. I.K. Anampali, number 75. Okay, you may be wanting to rush the passer, but when Jordan Reed leaves and goes to the other side, as you come upfield, right there, take a shot at him. Bump him off of his route. You're not... Um, that's the most important thing at that play at that time. Get Jordan Reed off of his route, then continue on to the quarterback. Cousins remains perfect. Two receptions for Reed. First and goal from the three. Two tight end set. Reed split wide to the right. Cousins throws it his way. Reed makes the catch for a Redskins touchdown. Well, they told us they were going to treat Jordan Reed as a wide receiver. That was one-on-one -on -one with a safety and coverage. So, uh, not on that situation where they're going to cover him. I'm going to walk another guy. This is Bakari Rambo. Here's your safety. One-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside. Jordan Reed versus the safety. I'm going to take that every single snap. Buffalo needs to make an adjustment. They talked about treating him in a specific way to get better matchups. And in a critical situation right there, they went standard matchup against the tight end. And Jordan Reed's going to win that. Bakari Rambo, the ex-Washington Redskin. Reed with his eighth touchdown of the season, seventh in the last eight games. Here is Dustin Hopkins, who was a Bills draft pick back in 2013. Hopkins adds the extra point. Redskins capitalize on their opening possession. They drive 84 yards and lead 7-0. Today's game is sponsored by Southwest. Transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. 7-0 lead for the Redskins. First quarter here in Landover. A 10-play, 84-yard drive. Cousins, 6-for-6. Six six. 
And he hit Reed for the touchdown. I mean, that's impressive two weeks in a row. And you talked about that dynamic of losing the toss, your opponent deferring. That means they, if they can time that out, get it at the end of the half, get it to start the second half again. <laughs> Washington's going to change that dynamic the way they've opened the game the last two weeks. That's right. Marcus Thigpen on the return. Out to the 23-yard line. Strong start here at home for the first place Redskins. Today's game is sponsored by Bud Light, the official beer sponsor of the NFL. Buffalo Bills offense out on the field for the first time. Tyrod Taylor with the fifth highest passer rating in the NFL this season. Backed up Joe Flacco for four years in Baltimore, his first season as a starter. Hey, wide, wide. Oh. Out of the shotgun, on first down, and a big hole for LaShawn McCoy. Boy, they get on you fast in that run game with LaShawn McCoy. And here's an offensive line that really wants to get back on the field. Had a rough day against the Eagles last week, especially that right side. And it was funny talking to defensive coordinator Joe Barry. You've got LaShawn McCoy, Sammy Watkins, Tyrod Taylor. One of the guys he said, don't look past, Robert Woods. He goes, that other guy's pretty good on the outside. That's right. McCoy picked up a first down. Now Taylor. Out to the 35. He gains two. Bills without their leading receiver, Charles Clay. The tight end is out. A look at the Redskins defensive unit. And Terrence Knighton gets a lot of attention inside. He's a big body clogging everything up. But if you lose focus on a guy like Ryan Kerrigan coming off the edge, especially he's going to be working against Jordan Mills, that right tackle. That's a matchup that favors the Redskins in passing situations. Mills once again in for Chantrell Henderson at right tackle. On second and eight, Taylor's pass is caught. Mentioned Robert Woods, and that's Woods wrapped up, taken out of bounds by Sean Goldson after a gain of three. That's a great opportunity as a complimentary receiver when you've got somebody like Sammy Watkins on the other side that draws a lot of attention. You get a chance to put up numbers like that. Big numbers for Woods against Philadelphia last week. Season high, 106 yards. Third down and five for Buffalo. Three receivers, Bills must get to the 43. Two one on one at the top with Sammy Watkins and Deshaun Breeland. College teammates, they know each other well. Taylor looked right, now moving to his left. Can't find anyone downfield, and a good second effort. Took a hit along the sidelines, and he is close to a first down. And this is what Tyrod Taylor does to defenses. You can do everything perfect. You can be great in coverage. You're showing blitz. You back out. You get pressure on the quarterback. He eludes that. Now he extends it. Now this is when mobile quarterbacks are dangerous. But here's the flip side of that coin. When you're running, you're susceptible to big hits. Well, Blackman knocking Taylor to the ground. Here come the chains. picks up the first and that's the dilemma when you face a quarterback that has the skill set that Tyrod Taylor does you can do everything right defensively on a third and five and they're moving the chains on you he's third in the entire league amongst quarterbacks with 371 rushing yards coming into the game only Cam Newton and Russell Wilson have more so Taylor scrambles for the first down Tight end O'Leary shifts from the 43 on the toss. McCoy cuts back to the left side. Not much. Game's about a yard and a half coming up to make the tackle. D'Angelo Hall. And I think this is a design play. You're trying to get everybody to run because they know that LaShawn McCoy is most dangerous when he's on the edge. So you're trying to trick that opposite contained Tyrod Taylor, the block on Trent Murphy to get LaShawn McCoy onto the edge. Second down and nine. As the, they get it into the hands of Marcus Thigpen on the end around, but it did not fool Bashad Breland. 
Well, when you play an offense run by Greg Rome and the offensive coordinator from the Bills, you're going to see a lot of different things in the run game. We saw the previous play. Now we've got motion coming across, a little jet sweep, trying to get on the edge as quick as possible. That's the area that Buffalo wants to attack when Washington run midpoint of the season. It was securing the edges, being strong on the edge with contain. Third down and 10. Three wide receivers set. They must get to the Redskins 47, and they do, as the catch is made by Woods for a Buffalo first down. Eight of 15. D'Angelo Hall continuing to be a physical presence at the safety spot in his conversion from corner to safety. Here's the in route safety coming up. I tell you what, he's put big hits on virtually everybody. We'd like to see him up a little higher as a former player. You don't want anybody down around the knees, get through that thigh area. and help your shoulder out a little bit too, D'Angelo. He has made the move from corner to safety. Cyrus Quanjo, 71. It has an extra blocker. Switch to the left side. On first down, there is a flag. It's McCoy. McCoy turns the corner. And games 11. I just think it's, it's, it's surprising to me sometimes when you know this is a unique play in the game plan. You've got the tackle moving across formation that he can't get lined up right. And I think this run is going to come back. Illegal motion, offense, the wide receiver, it's a five-yard penalty, replay first down. All right, time for a game break to Los Angeles. Mike Hill, Mike. All right, guys, Vikings, that sixth seed in the NFC, trying to end a two-game slide against Chicago. This helps Teddy Bridgewater to the rookie, Stephon Diggs, third touchdown of the season. It's first since week eight, 7 nothing Vikings in the first. Kenny Moose, back you. All right, thanks very much, Mike. Vikings at eight and five. They have lost three of their last four, like the Bills. Penalty forces Buffalo back five yards, first and 15. Taylor again moving left, directing traffic, and Taylor will cross the 40 down to the 37-yard line on first down and 15 in games nine. Again, you, you do everything right defensively. Washington has started out doing things well defensively. 94 with the pressure. It's a screen. They're trying to get it over to Nick O'Leary. That's even covered. Tyrod Taylor adjusts. Hey, get a block for me, Nick. I'm going to take this down the field myself. I mean, this is the second time on this drive where Washington has played good defense, and it's the athletic ability of the quarterback that's making the plays. Nick O'Leary, the grandson of George O'Leary. The great Jack Nicholas. Oh, 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 I state football in the game. To a close second down at six. Here is McCoy. And he's wrapped up by Will Compton. So the Bills now facing a third down and three. Will Compton filling in at that linebacker spot with the injuries to Perry Riley Jr. Jr. Keenan Robinson back healthy and active today, but not in there. Will Compton has done a nice job. He's really picked up that spot. A lot of that communication and recognition coming from number 51. Compton, the Redskins, second leading tackle this season. Tenth play of the drive for the Bills. Play clock winding down. There is a flag, as that pass could not be handled by Marcus Easley. Ball start. Offense, number 15. It's firing the snap. It's five-yard penalty. Still third down. Chris Hogan. Well, when we talked at the top about the Bills being disappointed last week because they beat themselves, there was 15 penalties that were accepted against the Bills last week. Nine of those were pre-snap. Those are the ones that drive coaches crazy. You cannot have pre-snap penalties. Bill second in the league in the penalty department this season. Third down and nine. Watkins top of your screen, split wide to the right. Taylor under pressure, moving right. Now he throws too far for Watkins. Watkins. <laughs> 
Had an opportunity right there, but again, a little bit of pressure by Jason Hatcher. We'll watch the matchup again against Bashad Breland. Zone coverage, he sees him escape. Now he kind of adjusts a little scramble drill right there. Misses him up over the top. Jamison Crowder back deep for Washington. Colton Schmidt out to punt for the first time. Low snap. Wow. Here's Crowder, and he takes it out to the 30. I gotta go back. Did he just miss that, or was that blocked? That was bizarre. That slipped through his fingers. Yeah. Only a 17-yard punt. Today's game is sponsored by Mobile Strike. Download and play now, free from the App Store. Another look at the last punt, which hit the ground. Looks like a drop kick, and we will check in with Mike Pereira in Los Angeles. Mike, what did you see? I think it's interesting. It's a drop kick, really, so you could have, I guess, scored three points on it if you made it, but the ball doesn't go back to the spot of the kick because it was touched in the field to play by the receivers, so the receivers and the, Red and the Redskins get the ball there. All right, thanks, Mike, and the officials did get together and then went over when Jay Gruden asked for an explanation. From the 29 on first down, Cousins to the outside to Deshaun Jackson who makes the catch at the 36 for a gain of seven. One of the matchup issues you're going to have when you play the Washington Redskins, we've talked about Jordan Reed, but Deshaun Jackson, since his return to the team, he battled that hamstring injury, was in and out of training camp the majority of the preseason, missed quite a bit early on. Since he's come back and added that deep threat element, it's improved everything offensively. The passing game, the running game, a valuable asset in this offense. Missed six games earlier this season with a hamstring injury. On second and three, it's Morris. Morris gains a couple, so third and a yard coming up for the Redskins. That's kind of funny, a couple plays in the game. I mean, all these spread offenses and open formations and shotgun. When's the last time we've had a drop kick right, in the NFL? Been a while. It goes back decades. I know it wasn't intended, but... And a good job by Mike explaining that it does not go back to the spot of the kick because it was fielded in the field of play by the Redskins. Third down and one. Cousins over the top, it's Reed. Bounces off the tackle and works his way out to the 44-yard line, and he's slow to get up. Yeah, yeah, you wonder if he got kind of hit on that elbow. You know, everybody wants to call it a funny bone, but it is anything but funny when you get hit there. And again, this is something we saw last week after the catch. He was exceptional after the catch last week. They're just getting roughed up by everybody. Looks like he grabbed shoulder, upper arm first. Fourth reception for Reed. He caught all nine passes thrown his way in Chicago last Sunday. Replaced by Alex Smith. This is Matt Jones in the backfield. His first carry. And the rookie out of Florida is close to another Redskin first down. And, and this is good for the Washington run game when you're starting to have some big chunk runs going to the right side. This is Morgan Moses and Brandon Sheriff. You're not going towards Trent Green that way. For Trent Williams on the left side, you've adjusted it. You're getting your big plays in the run game to the right side. On that last play, Marcel Darius shaken up, lift off to the Bill sidelines. Wide receiver screen, it's Jackson on first down. And Jackson takes it down the sidelines to the 39-yard line for a gain of seven as the clock winds down and this should take us to the end of the first quarter. Big opening drive for the Redskins. They went 10 plays, 84 yards for the game's first touchdown. Now on the move once again following the Jackson reception. So the teams will head to the other end of the field. Redskins look to maintain first place. Bills need to win to stay alive. 7-0 Washington. Kirk Cousins with a touchdown pass to Jordan Reed. He's now thrown at least one in every game this season. That ties Sonny Jurgensen's franchise record back when they only played 14 games. So Cousins with an opportunity to break that mark 
next Saturday against Philadelphia as Matt Jones is wrapped up after a short game by Stephon Charles. Interesting to watch this whole running back by committee, especially uh, during the course of the, the whole season with the Redskins. Alfred Morris usually is your first guy in. Matt Jones is a nice changeup, and I think when you go by committee, a lot of times you're trying to find the different styles, and, and I think that Alfred Morris and Matt Jones have very, very different styles as runner. Matt Jones a little bit more creative, a little bit more fluid. Alfred Morris, a pounder, straight ahead guy. Cousins under pressure, forced to throw it into the ground. He saw Jerry Hughes coming. Well, if you're going to play against the Redskins, you have to know that they like to get Kirk Cousins out on the edge. Good job by Jerry Hughes as the outside defender, understanding that not getting too flat with the ability to get back upfield and disrupt that play. So Jake Rudin will leave his offense on the field on fourth down. Send in two tight ends, Jordan Reed and Alex Smith. Jones in the backfield with Darrell Young. Wolfman tie into the snap. Well, how, how much did the Redskins work on that this week during practice? Short yardage situation. Hey, we might not even have to snap this. They really struggled with neutral zone last week. Encroachment. Defense. For 96. Five yard penalty. First down. I just don't know how you have the performance you had last week against Philadelphia in this situation where you had a lot of pre-snap penalties on your defense. And you get into your first short yardage opportunity on a fourth down, and you give Washington a free first down. So Charles commits the penalty. He's off to the sidelines. Darius shaken up earlier, has returned. New set of downs for the Redskins. Jackson in motion. From the 32. Cousins fires, and it's Jackson who makes the catch. Takes it all the way down to the Bills, five-yard line, a 27-yard completion. Good aggressive play call on first down. There's number 11, Deshaun Jackson. Again, it's just that little wiggle route, that little lean to the outside, and then up the field vertically. Fourth count of the game for Jackson for 70 yards. But Rex Ryan was right when he said we're going to have a tough matchup with Deshaun Jackson tomorrow. Sure was. First to the goal. From the five. And Jones is met in the backfield and taken down by Manny Lawson. Well, to become a complete tight end, you can't just catch. You also have to be able to block Jordan Reed right here, the tight end working against Manny Lawson just allows him to get inside right away. No chance for that run play to be successful. A loss of eight yards on the play. That is so difficult to overcome when you get down into the red zone. Big negative plays. Back up to the 13th. Tenth play of the drive for the Redskins. On second and goal, high snap. And the pass could not be handled by Jones with Hughes defending. Nice job recognizing the pressure by Kirk Cousins. He's going to have a free defender coming to him. He slides a little bit to his left, tries to get it out quick to the flat. But that huge negative play on first down really derailed this drive with an opportunity for another touchdown for Sean McVay and his offense. Redskins helped out by that fourth down penalty committed by the Bills defense, but then the loss of eight on the first down run. Now third and goal, another high snap. Cousins moving to his right. He's inside the 10 to the 5. Still going. Touchdown. 14-yard scoring run. Kirk Cousins. I don't think this was a called run from the get-go, but the, the players adjusted immediately once Kirk Cousins got to the outside. I think it's designed to get here. Uh, maybe it is design. They've got they got pullers out in front. What a what a gutsy call by the Redskins in a third and long situation called quarterback run. Cousins' longest run of the season, his fifth rushing touchdown. Redskins with two possessions, two TDs. Up 
Hopkins. The extra point, 14-0 Washington. Her cousins into the end zone. This game is sponsored by Ram Trucks. Guts, glory, Ram. 14-0 lead for the Washington Redskins at 11 play, 71-yard drive. Only Cam Newton has more rushing touchdowns among quarterbacks. So the Redskins score their first two drives last week in Chicago. They do it again today. Now they just have to sustain. Last week in Chicago, they allowed Chicago to get back into the game. Then they separated and allowed them to get back again. We'll see how they finish from this point moving forward today. Big Ben on the return. And he is brought down shy of the 20-yard line by Keenan Robinson. Kirk Cousins and the Redskins off to a terrific start. Gary Hughes fired up on the Buffalo sideline. Absolutely. It's an emotional game, and right now very frustrating for the Buffalo Bills following up a disappointing performance last week, off to a similar start this week. On first and 10 from the 18, it's LaShawn McCoy out to the... 26 for a gain of eight as we check in downstairs with Laura. I'm going to continue on that fired up Jerry Hughes. After that last touchdown drive, he came running off around the bench, through his helmet, came over across the sideline, through the training table to the ground, was in the faces of players and coaches. So emotional, so fired up. Uh, kind of in a timeout right now. Individual coaches and players have come up trying to calm him down, Kenny. All right, thanks, Laura. It's been a frustrating week for the Bills following the loss to Philadelphia. On second and two, Taylor under pressure, and he goes down back at the 21-yard line. Ricky John Francois, as we said, it's Los Angeles for a game break. Kurt. I'm not quite sure about that dance he was doing along the way. Hey, you've laid out the NFC East scenario. Giants trying to keep pace with Washington. Ruben Randall, 27-yard score from Eli Manning. They have tied Carolina as they start the second quarter. Kenny Moose and Laura. All right, thanks, Kurt. So a huge game for the Redskins here, huge game for the Giants. Eagles will host the Cardinals tonight, third down and five. Taylor looks to step up. Jason Hatcher brings him down back at the 12. Two straight Redskins sacks of Tyron Taylor. A great job with pressure up front in coverage on the back end, horizontal stretch on the field. Tyron Taylor, nowhere to go with the ball. Look at the front four. If you can get this much pressure with your down four, that means you're dropping seven into coverage. And they covered the Bills' wideouts like a blanket. So now Schmidt setting up at his own goal line. Remember on his first punt? But looked to be a drop kick. Did it hurt or not? It set up the Redskins with terrific field position. And they will have great field position once again as this punt is down at the 43. Taylor and McCoy talk about it. 41-yard punt. Redskins by 14. This game is sponsored by Burger King. Now get 10 chicken nuggets for $1.49 only at BK. Great sights around our nation's capital. We've certainly spent a lot of time here this season. We have actually gotten to take in several of the monuments, in some of our afternoon walks. Our fourth game here in Landover. Ruby Dixon was injured on the punt return. Well, the Redskins go to work from their 44-yard line. Cousins with time. There is a flag as the catch is made by Reed. And Jordan Reed takes it all the way to the Buffalo 31, a 25-yard completion. And we'll check with the referee, Cleve Blakeman. Prior to the pass, holding defense. More than enough for a first. Yeah, yeah. You, you, when you're in the secondary and you see Jordan Reed and the flag is near Jordan Reed, <laughs> a lot of times you think it's going to be against him. He's had some calls. There's the hold right there as he's clearing the route. Leonis McKelvin, penalty decline. From the Bills, 32, it's Morris. Gain of three. Second down and seven. Redskins with touchdowns on their... First two possessions to take a 14-0 lead against the Buffalo Bills squad that 
will be eliminated from playoff contention with a loss today. Yeah, but you just continue to see them make progress. One of the other things during the course of the game so far today, very aggressive on their first down play calling. Some big plays on first down in the passing game. Second down and seven. That pass is deflected and then coming back to knock it down. Smart play by Garcon as he kept it away from McKelvin. Yeah, well done by Pierre Garcon in that situation. Just make sure the defense has no opportunity for the interception after the batted ball. Manny Lawson coming on the outside, gets his hand up, gets it deflected. Now third down and seven. Redskins must get to the 22. As Cousins throws and making the catch for a Washington first down is Garcon. Good job at the line of scrimmage by Kirk Cousins trying to get that defense to declare what they're doing. Are you bringing extra men in the blitz package? He's got Matt Jones there. You get your favorable matchup on the outside. Pierre Garcon working against Bakari Rambo. Rambo, sixth round pick of the Redskins back in 2013. Redskins in the red zone at the Buffalo 18-yard line. White clock at two. Cousins fires, Reed, touchdown, his second today. Washington is just doing anything that they want offensively coming from the inside again Jordan Reed we talked about his matchup issue presses to the outside nice break back to the inside Leotis McKelvin's playing heavy on the outside inside help doesn't get there His third extra point. Second touchdown for Jordan Reed. 21 0 Washington. The frustration continues for the Buffalo Bills following Jordan Reed's second touchdown reception. A five play, 56 yard drive. Redskins with touchdowns on all three of their drives today. They lead 21 0. Big pen from the one. And he will be tackled inside the 10. The Shazer Everett along with Deshaun Phillips. There's Sean McVay, the offensive coordinator, pushing all the right buttons for Washington today. Welcome back, Kenny Albert, Daryl Johnston, Laura Oakman, Bills trailing by 21. Start from their nine-yard line. Baylor throws on first down and coming back to make the catch is Sammy Watkins downstairs to Laura. Kenny, what we're seeing from Washington, all three phases, Jay Gruden wanted them to picture all of this last night. He said he's never talked so much about visualization before, telling them visualize success, visualize breaking the huddle, visualize the play, making the play. But it wasn't just visualization. He said, I ended it with a Ray Lewis quote that I love, telling them effort is between you and you. Visualize it, then do it. We're seeing that. Yeah, whatever Jay Gruden said, it worked. It was ruled that last pass attempt from Taylor hit the ground. So second and ten. As McCoy stays on his feet. And is now down just shy of the ten-yard line. That's good team defense right there because the threat of LaShawn McCoy starting one way, breaking back the other way. You always have to be aware of leverage and contain. A lot of times you see a broken play like this bust for something big. Look at the team defense by the Redskins. Nowhere to go for LaShawn McCoy. 
This is a huge play for the Bills right now. This game is on the cusp of getting away from them. They cannot go three and out in this series right here. They must get to the 19-yard line for a first down. Taylor on third and ten. Down he goes. Ball comes loose on the sack by Kerrigan. It's recovered by Cordy Glenn, the left tackle. That is the third Redskin sack of Tyrod Taylor today. And on a play we just said was very pivotal in this early part of the game. They almost get a sack fumble inside the five. Ryan Kerrigan, it's over right now against Jordan Mills. He beats him immediately. Bill's very fortunate to get that back. Now Schmidt from deep in his end zone. Crowder on the run, takes it, and then loses the football. Tried to field it at the 37. And the Bills have recovered. Corey Graham, the Buffalo native, pouncing on it. So a uh, huge play as Crowder could not handle the punt. And the Bills will maintain possession. Uh, it's just a crazy sequence of plays right there. The Redskins almost a sack fumble inside the five. They're going to get the ball in great field position. Jamison Crowder can't secure it. And now the Bills with a first down outside the 40-yard line. Corey Graham hustling down. So they go three and out, but they do pick up the first down. But and they gain about, what, 38 yards? Well, Jake, Drake, he's fuming right now. I mean, as well as his team has played right now, that was a huge opportunity to just really put the hammer down on the Buffalo Bills. And they've given them life with that turnover on special teams. From the 42-yard line, this is Taylor off the fake to McCoy, crosses midfield, and picks up the Buffalo first down. Taylor for the Redskins, 45. That's something I'm surprised that we waited this long to see that. Some called quarterback runs. Greg Roman, Rex Ryan, they've talked about the athleticism that Tyrod Taylor possesses. Yeah, he wants to stay in the pocket and throw the ball and play the position traditionally. But when you have that much athleticism, use it to your advantage. We'll see if they continue with some more called quarterback option runs for Tyrod Taylor. He gained 14. New set of downs for the Bills from the 40-yard line. The Sean McCoy takes it down to the Washington 40 for a gain of four. And it's a real simple concept when you have the quarterback involved in the run game. From a defensive perspective, if you're a gap-style defense, you want one man to have every single gap. When the quarterback is viable, he ruins that plan. You out-leverage him, and it's one of the things that Joe Barry was concerned about, the defensive coordinator coming in. Third in rushing yards amongst NFL quarterbacks. He has 29 yards on the ground today on only four carries. Second down and six. Taylor steps up, and now he throws. Woods makes a diving attempt, but he's out of bounds. Robert Woods coming from the left side. He's going to cross the field on that deep crossing route, covered well by Will Blackman. And because of the pressure and the movement by Tyrod Taylor in the pocket, it just takes a little bit longer to develop, and you run out of field. Third down and six. Andy Watkins split wide to the left, top of your screen. Taylor on the slant. The antenna receiver, Hogan, with Will Compton on the coverage. He has good recognition. You can tell somebody who prepares during the course of the week with film, and that is definitely Will Compton. We saw a situation last week against Chicago where he recognized a play late in that game to shut down a screen here. He sees this play developing, gets a break on the ball. So now Rex Ryan leaves his offense on the field. Fourth down and six from the Washington 40. Will Blackman running onto the field for the Redskins. He's not even have his helmet on, and Washington will use a timeout. 
So the Bills. Washington takes its first timeout. This is the 30 second timeout. Bills given a reprieve on the muff on the punt. Jamison Crowder could not hang on to it, and now Buffalo facing a fourth down and six from the Redskins 40. Well, we talked to Jay Gruden during our, our visit with him about getting the team ready, and he talked about trying to figure out something to say to him Saturday night, but he felt like he didn't really need to say much because this team knows what's at stake. The big concern for me was kind of looking ahead. We always talk about that one game at a time mentality, and that's a message that's been coming out of Redskin Park all week long, all season long. But the ability to look at this Buffalo Bills team, who was struggling, and then you look at your other members of the NFC East, the Giants going against undefeated Carolina, the Eagles going against the two-seed Arizona. Do you, do you get complacent in that situation? I am so impressed how they have started this game today. They came out in a plate outstanding. They're looking to stop the Bills on fourth down. Taylor out of the shotgun, three receiver set. And it is Sammy Watkins who makes the catch for a Buffalo first down. Needed six and gained eight. Well, you've got to respect Sammy Watkins going down the field. So one of these situational things, Quentin Dunbar would get the, remember this is a guy who was playing wide receiver as the season started and had to shift a corner. That's a lot to ask in situational positions like that to understand, hey, he's going to be trying to get that first down yard. He's not going to try and run past you. First catch for Watkins today. From the Redskins, 32. Off the play fake. Taylor steps up and takes off. Taylor is all the way to the 21-yard line as he picks up another Bills first down, a gain of 11. When everything breaks down, he's just going to pull it down and run. Again, good coverage by the Redskins on the back end. And Tyrod Taylor steps up. He's thinking about throwing it, but then he sees some, some open space in front of him. And, and to combat this, you have to have hustle. That's Ricky Jean Francois coming from the pass rush and retracing all the way back downfield to help on the tackle. 40 yards on the ground for Taylor. First and 10 from the Washington 21. McCoy. He is slammed down by Bashad Breland. I think it's funny. I, I look at the offenses today in the NFL, and you see so much spread. We see shotgun on fourth downs. We're in the red zone, and we're throwing the football. But Joe Barry, the defensive coordinator for the Redskins, says it was true 40 years ago. It's still true today. You have to start off stopping the run. Our number one objective is not to let LaShawn McCoy get rolling on us. Second and ten. The fake to McCoy. Taylor, again under pressure from Kerrigan. And it's Kerrigan who makes the tackle. Marked down just inside the 13. It will be third at about a yard and a half. Again, this secondary for Washington, which has been in a state of change all season long, has just done a great job. And, and because their front four is getting good pressure all by themselves, they're able to drop the other seven in coverage. You can see Todd Taylor really has nowhere to go with the football. The best play in the Bills offense today has been the scramble by the quarterback. 48 yards on the ground for Taylor. E.J. Manuel has come in. Taylor split wide to the right. Two quarterbacks on the field for Buffalo. And this is Manuel. And he'll pick up the first down and then loses the football. But it looks like he was ruled down. Recovered in the end zone by Will Blackman, but they will bring it back out. Contact right there by the Redskin player as he goes down. So he is down. Yep, right knee was down. Then he got kicked in the head. Get to the helmet. But again, Greg Roman is going to give you a little bit of everything to defend. He's going to make you think out on the field. The yardage gain is the number of first down. E.J. Manuel, who started two games earlier this season. 16 career starts the last three years for the Bills. So now it is Taylor out of the shotgun. First and goal from the Redskins, six. And this is Taylor. And he's tackled by Will Compton down at the one. Uh, this is old school triple option right here almost. The only thing you're missing was the fullback dive. So you've got 
lead option called. You've got Jerome Felton out in front as your blocker, but Tyrod Taylor, LaShawn McCoy is in pitch position. So it, that's just, that's old school option right there. Clock winding down as we approach the two minute warning. 10 plays, 57 yards on this drive for the Bills. And now Taylor will head over to the sidelines as we hit two minutes remaining. First half here at Landover, Redskins with a 21-0 lead on the Bills. Get apps, videos, and more at iTunes.com slash NFL. 21-0 lead for the Redskins, but the Bills look to capitalize on the Washington turnover. Second and goal from just outside for one. Two tight ends plus a fullback. Taylor hands it off to McCoy. Timeout is taken by the Redskins. Tough sledding inside. We talked about Terrence Knight and being in there. Big pot rose. Chris Baker, too. You can see. Look at. Kendrick Golston moving the line of scrimmage. And then they get LaShawn McCoy turn. Looks like he's down right there. He's down short. He's going to skid in beyond that line, but he was down before it. Now third and goal. They'll send in number 71, Cyrus Quanjo is an extra blocker. His brother Ari is a Redskin, inactive today. You got some big bodies down inside. We're talking about guard center, guard area on that Redskin defense. Need to get onto the edges. A little bit risky here. It's a shorter distance going straight ahead, but those are some big bodies. For an extra blocker, two tight ends, and a fullback, all in. There is McCoy. There was movement. And flags prior to the snap. Pedro Golston, is he off on the snap perfect, or was he early? Defensively. Offside. Defense. Number 92. Lined up in the neutral zone. At least half the distance to the goal line. Replay third down. Yeah, half the distance for the defense is no big deal. So, you know, when you're trying to time that count, trying to see if you can get it with the offense to move. First Redskins penalty of the day. Officials get together. With a minute 48 remaining in the second quarter, and the Redskins leading by 21. Please put one minute 43 seconds on the game clock. All right, so they will take five seconds off the game clock. Bills leave in the same big personnel. Extra blocker, two tight ends, and a fullback. Stopped. You mentioned pot roast. Terrence Knight, he makes the tackle. He makes the tackle, but Kendrick Golson has been a beast in this goal line situation. Watch number 64 come into your screen right away. He forces. There's Will Compton again. Now a penalty marker has been thrown. Redskins call timeout to stop the clock. And there is a flag. There is no foul on the play. The runner was short of the goal line. Comes up fourth down. All right, so the flag. Timeout. Washington. Flag is picked up. Redskins use a timeout with a minute 38 to go. And We've got a new scientific theory here, Kenny. The shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Unless Terrence Knight happens to be at the end of one of those <laughs> right. lines. Pot Rose getting in the way. Well, the UFC starts the new year off with a bang, and it all begins on FS1 with the return of power-punching phenom Michael McDonald in his first fight in over two years. He takes on veteran fighter Masaori Kanahara.
UFC 195 starts with the prelims on Saturday, January 2nd, 7.30 Eastern, only on FS1, streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Fourth and goal. They take out the big personnel, send in three wide receivers. Taylor out of the shotgun. On fourth down, Taylor to the end zone. He was looking for Watkins. Breland on the coverage. No flags. Uh, they tried the middle of the field a couple times in the run game. I expected him to hit the edges at least once in the run game. Great goal line stand by the Redskins defense. Bills cannot capitalize. A sigh of relief for Jamison Crowder thanking his teammates. He muffed the punt, which gave the Bills the ball back. Uh, that's awesome right there. I mean, that shows you how, how this team is growing. You know, the, the, the relationships they have as teammates. Ball start, 86, offense. Penalties half the distance to the goal line. Still first down. Three phases of a football team, Kenny. Offense, defense, special teams. You make that mistake, the mistake in special teams. You need to get with your defensive guys for bailing you out. And now the Redskins backed up by a half yard following the read penalty coming out of the end zone. Give the Redskins a little bit of breathing room. It's Alfred Morris out to the four. After the Bills could not capitalize following that turnover. Redskins with touchdowns on their first three possessions. Last time they did that, September of 99 against the Giants. 2015 version of the Giants trailing Carolina 14-7, second quarter. Redskins, Giants, Eagles, all 6-7. and seven. So are the Bills. Washington in first place. Buffalo will be eliminated for the loss today. Here is Morris. Picks up a first down and more. Alfred Morris still going. And it's McKelvin who finally brings him down along with Rambo. 48-yard run. But back behind the play, there is an injured Redskin. This is a tremendous read. Patience, and then you're going to get out this way. Great job on the backside, Tom Compton washing that down. Happy to see Alfred Morris have the big run. It has to have been a difficult season for him after what he's done his first few years here in the NFL, sharing some time with Matt Jones, not really having the production that he's used to. His first rushing touchdown of the season last week. Right, Morgan Moses, the right tackle, the injured Redskin. The Visa Halftime Show is right around the corner, and so are the holidays. So, here at Fox, some of the staff have been decking the halls to get in the spirit. But honestly, some people are taking it a bit too far. Yeah, Coach Johnson, can I get back to work now? Sit still, son. I'm almost done. Did Jimmy ever do that for you during your days with the Cowboys? Yeah, he had everything wrapped up with yeah. us. <laughs> You saw Morgan Moses injured on the last play, so Ty and Secchi in it, right tackle, as Cousins checks it down to Matt Jones. With the Redskins out of timeouts, following the 48-yard career-long run by Alfred Morris. Cousins will spike it, and there is a flag. They had Pierre Garçon on a vertical route. He did not get back in time. They'll have the runoff here to end the half. 10 second runoff. Bills starting to leave the field. Redskins as well. Hold on, hold on. One of those scenarios that you've, you've got somebody down on a deep vertical route. You have to know that that's being called. If you have to clock it in that situation, let Pierre Garcon get off the field, have a substitution ready to go on to make sure you have the legal formation. An illegal formation on the offense. That penalty requires a 10 second runoff. Washington has no timeouts to tame seven seconds. This ends the first half. And what a first half it was for Kirk Cousins and the Washington Redskins on their opening drive. Cousins hitting Jordan Reed from three yards out. 
And then two more touchdowns in the second quarter. Oh, well, they've had their hands full with Jordan Reed all day. That was a great call right there. Third and long in the red zone after a big negative play on first down. I think that's a cold quarterback run. Jordan Reed for the second time. They did treat him like a wide receiver there. Had cornerback coverage, but it didn't matter. Bills eliminated with a loss. They trail by 21 at the half. Time now for the Visa Halftime Report. Kurt, take it away. Today's excitement is brought to you by Nissan. Kurt Cousins with a couple of first-half touchdown passes to tight end Jordan Reed. Also ran for a 13-yard score. Here's the second touchdown to Reed, giving the Redskins a 21-0 lead. Today's excitement brought to you by Nissan. Redskins looking to maintain first place and control of their own destiny in the NFC East. Bills will be eliminated with a loss today. First half numbers. Rushing yards even, but how about the disparity in the passing yards? Well, disparity in the passing yards, first downs. You know, Washington has just controlled the entire first half. And the big goal line stand, we touched on this a little bit during the first half. Washington's been in that situation where the team has deferred. They've won the toss, deferred. The dynamic is to try and create a, a touchdown at the end of the first half and getting the opening possession of the second half. That's why that goal line stand was so big for the Redskins defense because that would have perfectly fit into the strategy that a lot of coaches are using today. You score late in the first half and you get the kickoff right here. But instead, the Redskins defense kept the Bills out of the end zone. And now Buffalo will start from their own. 20-yard line as we welcome you back into the broadcast booth. Kenny Albert, Darrell Johnston for the Redskins. A terrific first half. Bills know that they must win to stay alive, trailing by 21. All three phases working well together. The one miscue you have, Jamison Crowder puts the ball on the ground on that punt return. An opportunity for the Redskins to have great field position going. Some more points, maybe 24, possibly 28 to nothing at that time. They don't work out that way. It comes all the way down the field. Their defense bails out special teams. They're playing great complimentary football today. Bills go to work from their 20-yard line as Taylor hands it off to LaShawn McCoy as we check in downstairs with Flora. Kenny, I talked to an obviously frustrated Rex Ryan who put it pretty succinctly. We have to change what we're doing. He said defensively, we have to communicate better and turn guys loose. Right now, we're playing their game. As for Washington's game, Jay Gruden said balance has been the key between the naked, between the bootleg, the naked runs, and uh, and, uh, and everything he's doing. He said keeping them off balance by their balance is how you have to beat this defense. He said we need to keep being unpredictable, Kenny. Thanks, Laura. Second down and seven. As Taylor sets up the screen, hits McCoy. And McCoy is out across the 30 for a Bills first down, and he remains down. Uh, you can see the frustration when he threw the football. Yeah, again, this is uh, we saw one from D'Angelo Hall in the first half. Get, get that, get that targeting up, and it's one of the things that the NFL was worried about when we took the targeting around the helmet area and dropped it. Well, where are these guys going to hit people? Where are the tackles going to be made? Because you can't really front guys up straight into the chest. Are you going to go low? We've got to stay off the players' knees as well. Sponsored by Southwest Transparency. No fares, nothing to hide. Sean McCoy jogging off the field under his uh -oh. own power. That is great to see. Great to see. And hopefully uh, that's a sign that we'll have an opportunity to have LaShawn McCoy back in the game. Placed by Mike Gillisley. First and ten from the 31-yard line. Keller could not find anyone downfield. Spins away. And that is tackled by... Will Blackman as he gets back to the line of scrimmage. What a job this defense has done during the course of the game with their pressure and their coverage packages kind of being in sync. They're able to get Tyrod Taylor on the move just rushing their four down linemen. Seven guys in coverage taking away all his opportunities to throw down the field. <laughs> We're up in Hampton, Virginia. There's McCoy on the Bills' sidelines. Taylor telling us he needed about 40 tickets for friends and family today. On second and ten, first carry today for Billisley. And he takes it out close 
to a first down. Mike Gillisley was drafted by Miami in the fifth round two years ago. Spent some time on the practice squads of both the Arizona Cardinals and the Bills playing in his third game for Buffalo this season. Gives him that little burst. Big touchdown run against uh, the Eagles last week, 19 yards. So uh, very straight ahead with that speed, though. Carlos Williams, the rookie out of Florida State, is active today. After missing the last two games with a shoulder injury. On first and ten, it is Willis Lee again. And Kyshawn Jarrett able to make the tackle. Gillis Lee out to the 44-yard line. So the Buffalo Bills, as Carlos Williams now comes in, replacing Gillis Lee. Bills at 6-7. Six and seven. But they must win to keep any playoff hopes alive. Even if they win, <laughs> it would be unlikely. Well, that's the difference in these two teams at 6-7. and seven. Washington still controlling their own destiny. Buffalo obviously needs a lot of help. New York Jets got to nine wins last night with their victory over Dallas. Kansas City leading Baltimore as they look to pick up win number nine. Here's Taylor with loads of time. Now he throws, and it's Sammy Watkins who picks up a Buffalo first down in Redskins territory. But if you're going to rush for, you can allow your quarterback to stand in the pocket and not feel pressure. Sammy Watkins is going to work from the left side. He goes all the way across the field into that empty area right there. That's that's too long of a play to develop. Watch Tyrod Taylor. Watch how comfortable and calm he is in that pocket. No pressure on that one. 26 yards. That's the biggest offensive play of the day for the Bills. Opening drive, second half, trailing by 21. And now a timeout is taken by Buffalo. Early third quarter in Landover, Maryland. Bills on the move, trailing by three touchdowns. First and ten from the Washington 31. Juan Joanne is an extra blocker. This is Carlos Williams, his first carry today. And Williams will be wrapped up and thrown out of bounds by D'Angelo Hall after gaining 11 out of Bills' first down. That's kind of a big, uh, it's a big tip-off when Cyrus Quanjo comes in motion you think? and sits over here. I'm like, oh, they might be running right, might be running right. So you get a bunch of big bodies out there. That's good patience by Carlos Williams. It didn't look like there was a whole lot there. It looked like Washington had it defended well. From the 20 on first down, it's Williams again. And he runs into the arms of Deshaun Golson. Gain of seven as we head to Los Angeles for a game break with Mike Hill. Mike. All right, Bears and Vikings. Stephon Diggs hadn't had a uh, touchdown since week eight. He's got two today. The rookie making it happen right here for Teddy Bridgewater. 33 yards. Get in there. Can you dig it? 24-7 Vikings in the third. Can he move back to you? Well, a big day for Teddy Bridgewater. Perfect passer rating. Second down and three. Baller looking. Now he throws to the end zone. There is a flag. Woods, the intended receiver. See if he might have went out of bounds and then came back in bounds. During your week of preparation, for the Buffalo Bills, the Redskins defense working about LaShawn McCoy working back here. So you're, you're thinking about protecting your edges, leverage, force, things like that. Now you've got Carlos Williams, a big physical runner. So different mindset for this Redskin defense if LaShawn McCoy doesn't make it back and you get the heavy dose of Carlos Williams. And you're right, it looked like Woods did step out of bounds. Illegal touch, offense, number 10 was out of bounds, came back in and first to touch. Penalties decline, brings up third down. Here comes E.J. Manuel again. So the Bills have two quarterbacks in the huddle.
Taylor. Tyron Taylor is split wide to the right. Manuel out of the shotgun. Fifth play of the drive for Buffalo. On the read option, he faked the handoff to Gillisley, and then it's Knighton who makes the tackle. Well, you know, it's, it's one of those obvious tips. It's kind of like bringing Cyrus Quanjo over to the left side and running left. We saw E.J. Manuel come in in a series in the first half, red zone area, with a similar play run when he was on the field that time. Well, here's Dan Carpenter. Now to attempt a 32-yard field goal. Colton Schmidt will place it down from the left hash. Carpenter's kick is straight through. So the Bills are on the board. Redskins defense holding the Bills to three and not seven. Today's game is sponsored by the new 2016 Ford Escape. Be unstoppable. Back in Landover, Maryland. As some young cheerleaders entertain the crowd. With the Redskins leading the Bills 21 to 3. Following the Buffalo field goal, Redskins get the ball back. It's Rashad Ross from the five. Cuts to the outside. Burns the corner. And is out of bounds. Shoved down at the 23 yard line by Marcus Easley. Ross comes up limping. As we check in downstairs with Laura. Kenny, an update on LaShawn McCoy. It is his right knee, which we saw his return is questionable. Before he walked into the locker room, as you see, made sure he walked down the sideline and kind of gave everybody a, a, a pat or shook everyone's hand, every teammate, telling him to get after it as the doctors waited, then took him into the locker room. Uh, as you see, as he walked out, his limp getting more pronounced the longer he was out here, Kenny. All right, thanks, Laurie. Missed two games earlier this season with a hamstring injury. Cousins and the Redskins go back to work as Cousins fires downfield. What an adjustment by Deshaun Jackson. And he will take it all the way. 77 yards for Redskins touchdown. Last week against Chicago, the end of the game, Kirk Cousins threw one up to Jordan Reed and referred to it as an opportunity ball, and I need to get comfortable with my guys on the outside so that I can do that more often. That's what this is. This is an opportunity ball for Deshaun Jackson. Coverage is not bad by Corey Graham. I'm going to underthrow it, a little back shoulder. There's another step, another step in the process for Kirk Cousins, building off of something from the previous week. How about the dichotomy? The two former Philadelphia Eagle teammates, Deshaun McCoy, trailing about to be eliminated with a loss today heading to the locker room and then Deshaun Jackson with a 77 yard touchdown as the Redskins look to maintain their hold on first place yeah, very important to this offense and we wondered how healthy he was he had that knee bruise last week he looks fine this afternoon third touchdown pass of the day for Kirk Cousins game is sponsored by Microsoft Surface the official tablet of the NFL All Redskins following the Deshaun Jackson touchdown. It is now 28-3, his 15th career touchdown catch of at least 60 yards. Fourth touchdown of this season for Deshaun Jackson. I like the trust. You know, this this is progression with the chemistry between quarterback and wide receiver the throw there and then a little bit of leap that looks familiar to another locale in the NFL well, we're not we're not that far north day. are we got some, all right Redskins fans you got to come up with a name for that one so Sean trying to start a new tradition first and ten for the Bills from their 20-yard line as Taylor will take off out to the 29-yard line. For a game of nine. How about this for Kirk Cousins here at home? He's now thrown 14 touchdowns since his last interception in a home game. 
I was more, you know, with all the stats, we saw those, the disparity between home and road, but I, I just thought he played a great game in Chicago last week. It's a huge, it's a huge box checked for this Redskins team as they move forward trying to win the NFC East. Second down at one. Out of the backfield, it's Gillisley for Bills. First down, the next box, the Redskins will be able to check with a victory today. First back-to-back -back victories this season. Unbelievable. Week seven and eight from 2014. Is that what it goes back to? That's a long, that's a long time not to win back-to-back -back games. They were the last NFL team to win a road game this season last week in Chicago. And they'll finish up with two divisional road matchups at Philadelphia Saturday night. And in Dallas, week 17, this is Watkins. And Watkins is out of bounds at the 40-yard line after a pickup of nine. Well, one of the guys we have to talk about, there's been a lot of change. We've talked about it in the secondary. Perry Fuel, the defensive back coach for the Washington Redskins. That has been a revolving door all season long, going all the way back to, to preseason. And, and the fact that you've, you've got a converted wide receiver playing corner, Quinton Dunbar, down, matched up against Sammy Watkins right here. And now Taylor firing downfield, looking for Chris Hogan. Angelo Hall on the coverage, so you have Dunbar, an extra receiver, and then Hall, the longtime quarterback who transitioned to safety just a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, trying to get a deep shot. Chris Hogan, right, the little wiggle to the outside. You got linebacker help trying to get there, but that's going to be D'Angelo Hall's play on the ball. That's an opportunity for Chris Hogan to make a big play, and it literally goes through his fingers. D'Angelo Hall, Jay Gruden, telling us he could play four or five more years at the safety position. I've been impressed with the transition. Third down and one. The handoff to Gillisley, and he will pick up a first down and more. Mike Gillisley will take it all the way 60 yards for a Buffalo touchdown. There's that burst. Very similar to like a LaShawn McCoy style. And yeah, he gets on the edge. There's a breakdown somewhere on this play because th there's nobody here. There's nobody here once he gets out to the side. And you've got everything washed down to the inside. Longest career run for Gillisley and the longest run of the season for the Bills. So a couple of... Big scoring plays here in the third quarter. Less than two minutes apart. 77 yards from Cousins to Jackson. And the 60-yard run by Gillisley for the Bills. First touchdown today. Carpenter adds the extra point. It's an 18-point game here in Landover, Maryland. Second touchdown of the season for Mike Gillisley. There's Mike Gillisley. 60-yard touchdown run, longest by a bill since Fred Jackson four seasons ago. John Ross back deep for the Redskins, who lead 28-10. Giants trail Carolina 28-7. So that is good news for the Redskins. Eagles and Cardinals later tonight. Ross saw the return. Stays on his feet. And will be tackled out of the 18-yard line. Well, we take you back to Super Bowl 26, won by the Redskins over the Bills, 37-24. But since then, the Bills have not been to the postseason since 1999. Longest round of the four major sports. Redskins have appeared in eight playoff game since that Super Bowl 26 victory over Buffalo and most recently 2012 Joe Gibbs iconic head coach of the Redskins sitting next to the team owner Daniel Snyder Cousins on first down complete to Jackson Ian Kelly is here today as well he's involved in the Point toss prior to the start 
of today's game. Great to see Jim. Yeah, I had an opportunity to visit with uh, Jim Kelly before the game out on the field. Great to see him back and healthy. And we started chatting a little bit about Christmas. He's got, uh, boy, he's got a great plan. The Kelly Christmas. I think it's, it's, it's got the name and everything. Very excited. There you go. And we will be in Buffalo next weekend. After Christmas, second down and four. This is Morris. By the way, remember Morgan Moses was injured earlier. The Redskins right tackle. He returned but just came out again prior to that last play. Replaced by Ty and Secchi. Redskins hoping to make it back to the postseason. They control their destiny. There's Moses. Redskins leading by 18. Giants trailing. 28-7, as we mentioned, at home to the unbeaten Carolina Panthers. And the Eagles coming off their win over the Bills will host the 11-2 Arizona Cardinals tonight. Cousins under pressure, able to get rid of it to Crowder. But a nice tackle made by Nikel Roby. Really nice job by Nikel Roby there. Designed to get Jamison Crowder across formation and get him outflanked just by that motion. Couldn't unru outrun Nikel Roby. So it's now second down and ten. Roby starting for the injured Stefan Gilmore today. down Cousins was looking for Deshaun Jackson and he lost him getting a piece of it. Kirk Cousins who earlier today Darrell set a franchise record for completions in one season and he's trying to get everybody up into the line right away wants to go quickly. Matt Jones in the backfield Redskins must get to the 38 for a first down. Cousins on third down, under pressure. Right on and he was forced to throw that one away and took a hit from Preston Brown. You get to the line of scrimmage quickly, so you have time to see what the Buffalo, Buffalo Bills are going to do. Went through a couple of checks there at the line of scrimmage, but credit the Bills. They had good coverage down the field. Preston Brown coming free late to get the hit on Kirk Cousins. So now the Bills will get the ball back, a chance to make it a two-score game. This is the first punt today for Tress Way. Redskins scoring touchdowns on their first three possessions. Fielded out the 25 by Thigpen. There is a flag. Thigpen out to the 29. Had on the side judge Joel LaRue, which means somebody went out of bounds. During the return, illegal block in the back, return team number 27. It's a 10 yard penalty for the spin of foul. First down. That's on Duke Williams. Duke Williams is who's going to have the penalty, but you have your defender go out of bounds. Now he's got to make an effort to get back in as quickly as possible. There's the, the touch in the back. So following the penalty, Bills will start from their 15-yard line. They scored a touchdown on their last possession. Off the play fake to Carlos Williams. Catch is made by Nick O'Leary. O'Leary's still going. That's his first NFL reception. And we mentioned earlier his grandfather is the great Jack Nicholas. Yeah, some speed for the son of grandson of Jack Nicholas oh looks like he might have stepped out right there right away stepped off the green <laughs> and now Jay Bird looked to challenge he got that just in time so it did look like O'Leary stepped out of bounds very very early on here just enough of a shove by Will Compton right there. 
Washington is challenging the ruling in the field, but the runner did not step out of bounds. Six-round pick out of Florida State. He was the John Mackey Award winner last year as the top collegiate tight end. I was impressed with the speed, uh, the separation that he had. It, it, when you watch the play develop, uh, it was interesting because in coverage, it looked like Will Compton felt very comfortable in the position he was in. I think he was surprised a little bit by Nick O'Leary's speed when he turned the corner. So how about that? Your first NFL reception, and you have the challenge flag thrown. It looked like O'Leary stepped on the white. That, uh, that one there looks... Looks like he's in the white. Mills without their starting tight end. That leading receiver, Charles Clay, out with a back injury. Along with Chris Gregg and Nick O'Leary. That, that's been a big loss today because we had the Bills earlier this year against the Giants, and, and Charles Clay was was a huge part of that game. And uh, to not have his production out here is, is very difficult for this offense to overcome. Greg Roman, you go back to what he did at San Francisco as the offensive coordinator there. He's a, he's a fullback, running back, multiple tight end, using the offensive tackles in different positions. He throws a lot at you, challenges you with formation, personnel group. You know, some of the traditional runs are going to come out of that, but he really makes you think pre-snap and recognize all the different pieces he's got in place. And yeah, you add to the fact that Charles Clay, you know, a, a pretty good blocker and line, but then also in the passing game, a tough matchup. So again, the question is, where will the ball be spotted? It's a first down either way. Adjusting the clock, trying to get the time back on the clock as that play extended down the field. Right, it will either be a 12-yard reception or a 37-yard reception. And like you said, the clock would be adjusted. Here's Cleet Blakeman. After review of the play, the ruling on the field stands as called. First down, Buffalo. Wow. So, there must not have been conclusive evidence that O'Leary stepped on the sideline. We'll check in with Mike Pereira. Mike. All right, please. You know, I, I think unless you get a shot right down the line any longer, they're going to stay pretty much with what's called because if you think about the Odell Beckham catch last week at the uh, sideline, uh, you know, looked like he was out of bounds, but the straight shot down the line showed that he was in. And so I think they're going to be very careful about overturning anything on the sideline unless it's really clear and obvious. Yeah, you're exactly right, Mike. We talked with Cleet Blakeman before the game, and we talked about a play last week in our game and referenced it uh, and used almost that exact same wording. And now Taylor firing downfield for Sammy Watkins. He makes the catch for a Bills touchdown. 48 yards. This is the potential that Sammy Watkins brings. It just has to be a little bit more consistent, and it has been over the last month or so. He beats Bashard Breeland right off the line. D'Angelo Hall is not able to get over the top and help out. And how about the throw by Tyrod Taylor? Drops it in right over the top. One of the things about this Buffalo Bills team, what was the word that they were talking about yesterday, Kenny, when we met with them? Consistency. And they came out and they were as flat as flat could be in the first half of this game. And now they're finally starting to come around. We've seen that a couple of times. They've had a couple of games where their first halves have been just awful. So the Bills showing some life. Carpenter with the extra point. They pulled to within 11. 85 yards on back-to-back -back plays. First, the 37-yard reception by O'Leary, which was challenged as to whether or not he stepped out of bounds. Call the field stood. And then 48 yards from Tyrod Taylor to Sammy Watkins. It's desperation time for the Bills, who would be eliminated with a loss today. And they have scored on all three of their second-half possessions, a field goal and two touchdowns. And it'll be interesting to see the response of the Washington Redskins on this next series because it was one of the things they did last week in Chicago on the road, not having won on the road all season. They kind of got caught in one of these situations and were always able to respond to that adversity. Look at the AFC wild card picture. Jets with a win in Dallas last night. Kansas City leading Baltimore by 10. Pittsburgh in action later today hosting Denver. And then 
The Bills, one of three teams at six and seven. Yeah, Pittsburgh may be the most dangerous team in that group. They've been playing great the last four or five weeks. Sammy Watkins with his eighth touchdown reception of the season. So the Bills with a couple of long scoring plays here in the third quarter. A 60-yard run and then a 48-yard pass. They have pulled to within 11. Jordan Gay to kick off. Bills the only team to carry three kickers, including the punter. Ross takes a knee. Redskins will start at their 20. We have been with the Redskins on this journey all season long, and when we first started with them, one of the big things that they were working on getting corrected was third quarter performance, and we've talked about that deferment and the way that things were working out with the coin toss and everything. They seem to have had that remedy. Is it, is it raising its head a little bit here again this afternoon? Some, some third quarter issues here to allow the Bills back in the game? Still 348 remaining in this third quarter, so a lot of time left for Buffalo. Redskins start from their 20, and now Cousins going deep for Deshaun Jackson. Just out of his reach with Darby defending. Again, one of the things that I've seen today is a more aggressive play call on first down. And we've seen this a couple of times with shots down the field on first and 10. That's, that says that you've got a lot of confidence because you're not going to hit that play. You know, the odds are it's not going to be completed, but you're trying, to, you're trying to surprise them. What that means is you feel very comfortable with your offense coming back and their response on second and ten. Jackson to the sidelines, huge day, six receptions, 153 yards, and a touchdown for Deshaun. Cousins on second and ten, passes caught. And taken close to a first down by Jamison Crowder. Kind of overlooked on the outside for the Washington Redskins. We talk about Jordan Reed, Deshaun Jackson a lot. Kind of that emotional spark with Pierre Garçon. Jamison Crowder really doing a nice job for the Redskins on that slot roll, working the inside. Crowder gaining nine. Now third down and one. Tom Compton in as an extra blocker for the Redskins. Fullback Young is on the field. And it's Morris who picks up the first down. Three touchdown passes for Kirk Cousins today. Adding to his tremendous numbers here at home this season, Morris. 71 yards on the ground, and a big first down on the last play. Sean Jackson with the 77-yard touchdown reception. Jackson split to the right. Off the fake to Jones. Cousins under pressure. Down he goes as Jerry Hughes had the better of Trent Williams on that play. Way outside here. He's very athletic on the outside. A lot of space for him to work in there. That's, that's, uh, that's a tough job for Trent Williams right there. No help either. You're on an island all by yourself on the outside with a very athletic speed rusher. Fifth sack of the season for Hughes. He had 10 last year. Only the 20th for the Bills this season. Loss of 11, second down and 21. Cousins throws, and the catch is made by Reed. Back to the original line of scrimmage as we head to Los Angeles for a game break. Kirk. Well, Washington fans will love this. Cam Newton and the Panthers laying it on the Giants. Hooks up with Ted Ginn. Fifth touchdown pass of the day for Cam Newton. They're up 35-7 in the third quarter. Of course, the Giants, part of that Washington, Philly, New York tie for first place in the NFC East. Kenny. All right, thanks very much, Kurt. Panthers clinch home field with a win and an Arizona loss to Philadelphia. Third down, and oh, the man Jones could have, he could have continued in motion. I actually did that in my career one time. Ball starts. Offense, number 31, 
Five yard penalty. Still third down. So you know the feeling. Yeah, I do. But but you recover. You, you jump the count. You're going forward. Now all you got to do is continue like you're going in motion. You're like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. But now keep coming this way. And you just went in motion. So what did Troy say to you? They actually used the motion later in the year. And Ernie Zampini, Zampezi was our offensive coordinator. He goes, I like that little wrinkle. Turning a negative into a positive. Uh, you got to think on your feet out there, Kenny. They're down at 16 following the penalty. Redskins must get to the 42. Cousins throws. And the catch is made for a first down on third and 16 by Garcon. Needed 16, picks up 20. Uh, and again, there's number 88 at the top. The, the tight formation right there. Pierre Garçon is, is the young son guy. He's going to get, he makes all the, the tough catches. He's a physical guy. He's an emotional guy. This shows you the progress that this off, third and 16, when we first started covering the Redskins back in October, late October, they weren't going to convert it as third and 16. Yes, we have seen our share of the Redskins this season. They will take an 11-point lead into the fourth quarter over the Buffalo Bills with 17 third quarter points they trailed 28-3 at one point it's now an 11 point game and a big third down conversion by the Redskins to continue this drive as we start the fourth first and 10 44 yard line the give to Morris his helmet goes flying as he gains Three yards setting up second down and seven for the Redskins who control their own destiny. You said it once, you said it ten times today. Cowboys eliminated last night with their loss to the Jets. Panthers leading the Giants 35-7. At the moment, Washington Giants, Philadelphia all at six and seven. You looked at the matchups coming into this weekend and you could play that that style, everything's, everything could fall in Washington's favor, but they've done a real nice job just coming out and taking care of their business. This is Morris once again. Getting some new chin straps out there, Kenny. These things keep popping on. <laughs> now Marcel Darius, Morris on the previous play. Now Morris unstraps. His chin strap as he heads to the sidelines, replaced by Matt Jones. Third down and six. Redskins have done a terrific job on third down today. I had a nice afternoon last week against Chicago, and they took a big step last week, continuing it again this week. They must get to the Bills, 46. Cousins under pressure. Able to get rid of it, and the catch is made by Crowder, so the Redskins convert yet again on third down. Matt Jones gets just enough of the blitz coming off the edge. You've got a cross formation to get there. So he's got to come across here and try to get this block. And he just gets enough, catches Duke Williams out of the corner of his eye in the last second. And then a 12-yard gain for Crowder after the nice play by Matt Jones. 10th play of the drive for the Redskins. Two minutes in, fourth quarter. First and ten from the Bills, 40. It is Jones. And he's brought down by Corey Graham after a gain of four. The Bills defense has never really gotten the Washington offense uncomfortable today with pressure on Kirk Cousins. And you know, we, we know Rex Ryan's defense is, is very aggressive. You're going to see a lot of different formations. It's more of a game plan style defense. They're going to attack your protections. They're going to do things. He wanted to get Kirk Cousins uncomfortable in that pocket. They have not been able to do that all afternoon. Cousins with his sixth 300 yard pass a game of the season. That is a new franchise record. From the 37, it's Jones. Jones able to break a couple of tackles, picks up a first down, and then a couple of flags come in. This is one of the reasons when we talk about pre-snap penalties that you can't accept them because that's stuff that's within your control and your technique. Sometimes these are just part of the game. Preston Brown's coming across trying to make a play. He gets up a little bit high. He gets the face mask.
Personal foul. Grabbing the face mask. Defense. Number 52. 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. Coaches are going to evaluate your penalties at the end of the game, and sometimes they're just part of what happens during the course of the game. And we got just got, <laughs> got a wrestling match going on between Tom Compton and Jerry Hughes. They've been going at it for a couple of plays now. But you'll evaluate all those penalties, and sometimes you can justify it as part of the game, aggressive, maybe a little bit of technique issue, get your arms down when you're tackling. But the pre-snap ones that they had in the first half, just unacceptable. Uh -huh. First and ten from the Buffalo 12. A gift to Jones. Another flag as Jones picks up two. Well, they were able to overcome that eight-yard loss in the first half when they got down in the red zone. Could be a big penalty coming the Redskins' way here. He'll leave us a hands. Hands to the face. Defense. Ah, wow. Right yard penalty ends the end of the run. First down, Washington. Medical staff tending to Stephon Charles. <laughs> See if it's right there on the top of your screen. It kind of went blurry on you a little bit. Could be this, the top of the screen there. There was one earlier that might have been possibly what was called. Six Buffalo penalty. Ball now spotted on the Bills' five-yard line as Charles heads to the sidelines. The Big East begins conference play next week. It's all on FS1, including a sensational New Year's Eve matchup between two of the top teams in the country, number 10, Xavier, and number 12, Villanova. It's all on your home for Big East Hoops. FS1 streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Early fourth quarter, Redskins leading 28-17. They empty the backfield, Matt Jones split out to the left. Now Jones shifts it to the backfield, first and goal from the five. Play clock winding down, it's at two. And the Redskins unable to get the stop off in time. Prior to the delay game, Washington takes its second timeout. This is a 30-second timeout. So the Redskins do get the timeout. Called, you mentioned earlier, eight-yard loss. They still were able to score last week. A penalty yeah. when they were at the one-yard line. Inside the one. back to the six. Scored a touchdown. So some of these issues have not hurt the Redskins. They do get the timeout here, so the ball will stay at the five-yard line. Perfect in the red zone today. Sean McVay, their offensive coordinator. Kirk Cousins with three touchdown passes and a touchdown run. First and goal from the five to the end zone. Garcon, touchdown. Cousins about a comment he made this week where he called himself a distributor and I said tell me about that what does that mean he goes well it's I don't like the game manager moniker that's just somebody who's out there that's trying not to lose the game for you you know I, I have lots of good players around me I don't have to do this all myself he has done a great job again this weekend of distributing the ball getting everybody involved in the passing game Jordan Reed has had a great afternoon again today Deshaun Jackson just been outstanding today. Pierre Gosson, a huge conversion on the third and 16 earlier in that drive. Now the touchdown, Jamison Crowder, has been a, a guy who's made some plays for him. He converted a third down on that drive. Hopkins, the extra point. Fourth touchdown reception of the season for Pierre Garcon. Redskins back up by 18. Sponsored by Burger King. Now get 10 chicken nuggets for $1.49 only at BK. 
Back in Landover, Maryland with producer Barry Landis, director Brian Lilly. Kenny Albert, Daryl Johnston, Laura Oakman, a 13-play, 80-yard drive. Redskins chewing up seven and a half minutes of the clock. And against the defense that's very multiple that can challenge you in a number of ways. That, that's one of the things that's not supposed to happen. That's a compliment to Sean McVay and his group as an offense today. You're supposed to make a mistake at some point that you can't overcome. And the Redskins have not been doing that today. Bills offense back onto the field. Crowd chance again. You like that? Kirk Cousins joins in. That has become his mantra. It all started following the comeback victory over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers earlier this season. I actually saw a T-shirt last week in Chicago with Sean, with Kirk Cousins on it that said, "You like that?" That just made by the tight end Chris Gregg. That was a record-setting comeback by the Redskins. They were two and four heading into that game against Tampa Bay. They fell behind, 24 nothing. Came back to win. Two weeks later. 33-point victory here over New Orleans with Cousins through four touchdown passes. He matches his career high today with four. Then a loss in Carolina, win over the Giants. Lost to Dallas here at home and a win in Chicago last week as the catch is made by Robert Woods in Redskins territory for a Bills first down. Tyrod Taylor standing tall in the pocket. Again, it's been consistent all afternoon. The Redskins have been able to affect the pocket with just their down four and drop the other seven into coverage, making it hard to find those open receivers. Just over 10 minutes remaining, fourth quarter. Redskins with an 18-point lead from the Washington 47. That pass bounces away from Watkins with Dunbar defending. I, I tell you what, he is going to turn into a heck of a cornerback. It, the funny thing is it all started when he went to special teams. That's when they noticed that he had that skill set. So as, as the fourth, fifth receiver on a team, you're going to have to be a, an active member of special teams. So they put him out in the gunner spot, you know, trying to defend the guys from covering punts. And then all of a sudden the next day he found himself with Perry Fuel in the secondary learning how to play corner. Right, a wide receiver at the University of Florida doing a terrific job at corner in his rookie season in the NFL. Second down at 10 as Taylor steps up and now he throws. There is a flag. Pass was intended for Chris Hogan. Holding. Offense number 79. 10-yard penalty, replay second down. So Jordan Mills, the right tackle. Yeah, he drew the tough job today, walking Ryan Kerrigan. But again, the reason this is breaking down, you have to credit the secondary of the Washington Redskins doing a nice job with the coverage, trying to get it to Chris Hogan there in the hole as protection breaks down. Kerrigan with a sack earlier today, one of four. Sacks of Taylor by the Redskins. Now second down and 20. Taylor checks it down. And a nice tackle made by Deshaun Golson on Mike Gillisley. Golson part of that Redskins secondary. You've been talking about Perry Fuel, their defensive backs coach, as we take another look. Of course, Bills fans certainly remember Perry from his days as their defensive coordinator and the interim head coach in Buffalo in 2009. Great addition to the staff this year. You, you look at Joe Barry and Perry Fuel and Bill Callahan coming in, really stabilizing that staff for the Washington Redskins. Fuel, former defensive coordinator with the Giants. Third down at 19. Taylor throws. It's Hogan to the Washington 44. Stopped about seven yards shy of a first, gain of 13. So the Bills now facing a fourth down and seven with nine minutes remaining. Here's Perry Fuel. Always working. Three wide receivers set. Watkins split out to the left. Fourth down and seven.
Baller under pressure. He's hit as he throws, and the pass sails incomplete. We talked about the down four getting there all afternoon. You get into a critical fourth down situation, you change it up on them, and you bring six, and they get to Tyrod Taylor. This game is sponsored by K Jewelers. Every kiss begins with K. Redskins get the ball back, leading 35-17. With eight and a half remaining. Why not? On first down, it's Alfred Morris. Drags Corey Graham with him. And games three as we head downstairs to Laura. Kenny, I talked earlier about how Kirk Cousins is using the emotion, the critics, the media, and his father's battle with cancer to fuel him this season. I wanted to do an update on his father, Don, who was released from the Cancer Center in Houston in October. He's been regaining his strength, health, and appetite since then. His next step going back January 4th for tests. He isn't here today, but for a great reason. He's a pastor, and this is the first Sunday since being home. He'll be speaking at church, leaving the Christmas services today, Kenny. All right, thanks, Laura. That's certainly great news for the entire Cousins family. Second down and seven. It's Morris. Out to midfield. And when we spoke with Kirk Cousins, he told us every week, well, we want to start fast and finish strong. People remember how you finish, and it was certainly a fast start for the Redskins who scored touchdowns on their first three possessions. But I think you go back to what you said uh, earlier when they were 2-4 and four, that Tampa Bay game really kind of the tipping point of this season. There was a lot of negative things being said about Kirk Cousins here locally to the point where Jay Gruden made sure that he didn't read any of that and just you know try to stay as positive as you can and to show you that chant of the fans here saying you like that to think back six weeks ago seven weeks ago how far he has progressed in the eyes of the fan base here is amazing. Jones stops short on third down. And remember, he was not named starter until late in preseason. It was Robert Griffin the third. And then Cousins named the starter late, so he did not go through the offseason program at training camp as the start. No, that's why this is going to be interesting, you know, with the, the quarterback situation here in Washington. Is, is, is that their guy? Is this who we're moving forward with? Kirk Cousins. they got RG3, who has been active for one game this year. Obviously, he's not going to be here anymore. What happens to Colt McCoy, who's been backing up Kirk Cousins all season long? Uh, you know, those are some of the big things that need to be answered here as we move forward. Obviously, Kirk Cousins has just done a tremendous job here uh, in his progress and his growth, but it's been an evaluation process all season long. Kirk Cousins' numbers at home this season are now 16 touchdowns, two interceptions, and we can assure you the fans like that. Yeah, and, and one of the, I, you know, I have spent, every time we've done a Redskins game, I have gone out and I've talked to Robert Griffin III, and one of the things he told us early on was he and his wife, Rebecca, had had a baby girl resand in May and he said that could not have come at a better time at a really difficult time in his life it helped to put everything into perspective and prioritize things the right way I'm anxious to see what Robert Griffin the third does next season their catch is called for by thick pen Redskins by 18 this is what we have to look forward to over the final two weeks of the NFL regular season Redskins on the road for two at Philadelphia, at Dallas. Eagles, of course, will play tonight. Home for Arizona. Host the Redskins Saturday, and then will travel to face the Giants Week 17. A huge game next week against Philadelphia. That's the big game. This is a one-week-at-a-time mentality. It is so cliche. It is so frustrating, even for me to hear. I you know the fans have got to be like, come on, not the one-week-at-a-time thing, but, boy, is it, it's never been more true than this season. Carlos Williams on first down out to the... 17-yard line, gain of seven. Giants have scored a couple of touchdowns. They are early in the fourth quarter, trailing Carolina 35-21. Dallas eliminated last night with their loss at home to the New York Jets. As Taylor will throw it away, third and three upcoming. And we talked about the quarterback situation with the Washington Redskins, very similar with the Buffalo Bills. You know, with the playing time that Tyrod Taylor has gotten this season, He's a free agent after next year. Is, is this the future quarterback that Rex Ryan and his staff are going to move forward with after 2016? Rex Ryan told us earlier this season, Taylor flat out won the job in training camp. It wasn't even close. There's E.J. Manuel. Rex told us last night when we asked him about Tyrod Taylor, he has exceeded where I thought 
he would be. He's really playing for the first time. Back up Joe Flacco for four years in Baltimore. Won a Super Bowl ring. As the Ravens back up. And now Taylor will be sacked for the fifth time today. Preston Smith with his fourth sack of the season. Preston Smith coming from the outside. Working against Cordy Glenn. You got to put your thigh, your, your shoulder through the thigh. You, you, these guys are so athletic. Some of the edge rushers that you get in the NFL are so athletic. You get down that low, you don't have a shot. And you can see the pain that Tyrod Taylor was in there. LaShawn McCoy already out for the rest of the afternoon. Five Redskins sacks. Smith punting from his own three-yard line. And a fair catch is called for by Jamison Crowder. We've talked throughout the day, throughout the season, about the evolution of Kirk Cousins. Another big day today with four touchdowns, no interceptions. It's going to be interesting to watch this team moving forward because they continue to check boxes. Pressure on the quarterback. That was one of the areas that a lot of people here in Washington were talking about. A little bit of frustration that they weren't blitzing more. With the down four today has done a great job just by themselves. And Joe Barry, the defensive coordinator, has done a nice job of adding a couple of guys from time to time to add to that. But the biggest thing for Redskins fans, this has been a complete team win in all three phases. Offense, defense, special teams. You know, Laura talked about it at the top, the speech that Jay Gruden gave his team, visualizing everything in all three phases. Boy, they did a great job at that this afternoon. Matt Jones on first down, followed up by Corbin Bryant. As we approach five minutes remaining here in Landover, Maryland, Redskins average 22 points today, 35, 430 yards of offense, perfect in the red zone and 70% on third down. Some critical thirds down when that game was kind of hanging there in the balance as Buffalo was making a move. But a little bit of bad news right there. Josh Laribas, who made the switch from left guard or from guard to center earlier this season and has been growing at that position. There's 67 right up front. We see the piles always tipping on the guys. See that foot gets trapped right there. So Brian De La Puente, the former Saint and Bear, signed earlier this season. When Corey Lichtensteiger went down, now he's on the designated four return list. Lichtensteiger is expected to begin practicing this week. So the rebus to the sidelines. Second down and seven. Get, 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 get! 18 down, 18 down! Whitey! What's up? Cousins takes the snap from De La Puente, hands it off to Jones. And Jones is out to the 46. It will be third down and four, but first the Bills call on timeout, stopping the clock with 4.58 remaining. Well, we've been talking a lot about him today, the process he's gone through during the season, and it's been another great afternoon here at home. Jordan Reed on the outside sure does help you a little bit, huh? Two touchdowns there. But then they really start to get aggressive. The opportunity ball that Kirk Cousins talked about during the week, trusting his guys on the outside, giving them an opportunity to make plays. One to Deshaun Jackson, follows it up with another one to Pierre Garçon. And let's not forget the third and 13 inside the red zone on the called quarterback run. I'm pretty sure that was a called quarterback run. And Kirk Cousins gets in for a touchdown. That might be the one play he wants to talk about after the game <laughs> before his four touchdown passes. And compliment his guys up front who've been under fire all season. Third down and four. And Jones is down back at the 42. So the Redskins will punt it away. The Bills are out of timeout, so Washington will run the clock down. Criticized a lot for the amount of penalties he's had this season, Jerry Hughes, defensive end for the Bills. But somebody that Dennis Thurman had high praise for when we sat down with him last night and said he's done everything we've asked him to do, continues to battle. It's been a tough year for us defensively, obviously haven't done the things we'd like to do. And Jerry Hughes continues to work and underrated in the run game. Everybody looks at him as that edge rusher, but it's done a nice job. Right, Thurman telling us last night, I would not trade Hughes for anybody. He's had a phenomenal year. Press Wade punching. Brought it the third time, did not punt in the first half. And it will bounce into the end zone for a touchback.
Well, the Redskins with the big win in Chicago last week, their first road victory of the season. And here is what folks have been saying about the Redskins as this season has moved on. And that's a big one right there, Jake Rudin, you know, showing growth, the staff here. And, and we're going to have a similar set of articles that are going to come out this week. First time since week seven and eight of 2014, back-to-back -back wins for the Washington Redskins. So, Final home game for the Redskins as they will hit the road to face divisional opponents Philadelphia and Dallas catches made by Woods D'Angelo Hall the tackle Woods did not get out of bounds so the clock continues to run and he comes up limping so for the Bills they will be eliminated from playoff contention with a loss today the start of the season three and two five and four but have dropped three of their last four coming into this one. First season under head coach Rex Ryan as Carlos Williams picks up a first down and more out to the 44-yard line. So a new set of downs for the Bills. Redskins keeping an eye on the scoreboard, and we will send you to bonus coverage of the Carolina Panthers and the New York Giants at the conclusion of this one. Carolina looking to remain perfect midway through the fourth quarter lead the Giants by two touchdowns they had a 35-7 lead another tackle for Hall as he brings down Mike Gillisley I think it's gonna be interesting to see what happens next season with the Buffalo Bills you know, year one with with a new staff and everybody getting used to a new system it's a new offense it's a new defense you know new personalities it's tough that first year so do you take that step in the second year and with all the talk this week about the style of defense that Rex Ryan plays you know I have a question about can you do that type of defense in the NFL today with the CBA the restrictions on the time you can be around the facility with free agency the amount of change he's asking these guys to learn to do a lot officials get together and they rule that is initially they rule the catch but now they say no Marcus Easley the intended receiver it was initially ruled a reception does that right foot get down? And then the ball oh, the is ball moving. Out. That's the big one. Ball moves as he hits the ground. So it looks like he did get both feet in, and that's what happened. And he doesn't complete the process as he goes to the ground. Bills lost LaShawn McCoy earlier in this half to an injury. They actually scored all 17 of their points in the third quarter after McCoy left the game. Third down and one. And it's a first down for Booby Dixon as we hit two and a half minutes remaining. Well, it'll be another week of answering questions for Rex Ryan. And, and when we sat down with him last night, he was not happy about the team's performance last week. He was very confident in the approach that he and his staff have. But they've, they've, they've come up short here again this afternoon. And, and there will be more questions that he has to ask. But he's one of the guys we enjoy visiting with, enjoy being around and talking football and uh, you know, I, I, he's going to get this thing figured out and we'll get to talk to him again next week as we look ahead to the Cowboys and the Bills Redskins look ahead to the Eagles as we hit the two minute warning in Landover Maryland it's remaining here bonus coverage coming up Panthers and the Giants and the Giants have just scored another touchdown as we speak, so it's now 35-27. Third straight touchdown for the Giants. Taylor checks it down to Dixon. We'll send it to Joe Buck, Troy Aikman, and Aaron Andrews. As soon as this one comes to an end, Carolina led 35-7. At one point, Giants with their third straight TD. Over five minutes remaining. In that one. Second and six to the end zone for Watkins. And a Bills touchdown. That's a heck of a throw by Tyrod Taylor. That's a nice touch on that football. Sammy Watkins up at the top. Good release off the line to get on top of the defender. Sammy Watkins 
Nice job with the feet coming into the end line. There's one, two, and watch him drag this one. Gets the third. Gets the three times down. All scoring plays are reviewed. Touchdown has been confirmed. I had 12, 12 guys on the field for Washington. Right, so now the Bills will 12 go for two. Defense. But Buffalo has elected its option to take the ball from the two-yard line to the one-yard line half the distance and try for two points. Right, so even if you set up to kick the extra point and a penalty is committed, you can then change your mind and go for two from the one-yard line instead of the two. It's going to be interesting down the stretch with the new rules on the extra point that were put in for this season as we get into these last two games. How does weather impact some of the decision making in these outdoor games if we ever do get some winter weather? Right. So if the Bills convert, they would make it a 10 point game. If you miss, it's 12. And then you would need two touchdowns. the pitch to Williams reaches across and he's in ball across the plate so it's a two-point conversion for Buffalo and they pulled to within 10 with a minute 26 remaining uh, just a smart play by Tyrod Taylor he gets the defender to commit to Carlos Williams on the pitch little fake pitch gets him outside cuts up inside looks like it's going to be short but the heady play to break the plane with the football 10-point game in Landover. We check in on the Panthers and the Giants with Mike Hill. And here come the Giants. Once down 28, they're roaring right back with 21 unanswered points. Eli Manning, the Shane Vereen, 8-yard score. It's 35-28 Panthers. Just over five minutes left in this game. Time permitting, you'll see the end of this one from the Meadowlands. Kenny, Moose, back to you. It's a good one. All right, thanks very much, Mike. Well, it's been a great season for the Carolina Panthers. Can they keep it going up in New York? Can they hang on? See right there, eighth team to start 13-0. And, oh, and look what those teams have accomplished once they get into the playoffs. And not just the 13 in a row this year, but going back to the last four last season in the regular season. The Giants who trail by 28 at one point. The largest ever regular season comeback in league history. 49ers against the Saints came back from 28 points down back in 1980. And of course, the Bills in the playoffs against Houston battled back from a 32 point deficit. Now the outside kick, and it's Garcon who fields it for the Redskins. And now they will be able to. Run out the clock, Bills out of timeouts. Well, you got to have guys like Pierre Garçon on your team. The big third down and 16 completion on uh, one of the drives when the game was starting to get close with Buffalo. The touchdown later on in the half and then out there on the onside kick recovery team, making sure that Buffalo doesn't get an extra possession. So Garçon has scored the last Redskins touchdown, fields the onside kick attempt. As the Washington Redskins lead the Buffalo Bills by 10. Bills without any timeouts, so the Redskins can run out the clock. We thank our entire crew. Great job today, led by producer Barry Landis, director Brian Lilly, associate director Joe Williams, broadcast associate Paul Marmoreau, our technical producer Sid Drexler, technical director Jared Legrani, and crunching the numbers for us, Dave Corris, Ricky Camps, and our spotter Ben Palma. So the Redskins will finish with a home record of 6-2, maintain control of the NFC East. They'll move it to sole possession with the Giants' loss, and the Bills, in Rex Ryan's first season as their head coach, will be eliminated from playoff contention. Jay Gruden shaking hands on the Washington sideline. We'll take you to the Meadowlands where the Giants Trail by only seven, coming back from 35-7. And of course, later tonight, it's the Eagles hosting 
The Arizona Cardinals, tremendous day of action in the National Football League. Darrell, to you and your family, have a Merry Christmas on Friday. Thank you, Kenny. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas to you and your family as well. And Kirk Cousins with another big day. Four touchdown passes as Jay Gruden's Redskins win back-to-back -back games for the first time this season. Go to 7-7. Seven and seven. Giants have pulled to within seven against Carolina. Eagles will play tonight. So the Redskins win it by the score of 35-25. We will return to Landover, Maryland after these messages following the Redskins' victory over the Bills.